Good morning. My full name is Michelle Ahinawa Arba Asafo Grant, and due to an overwhelming want of a nickname, I go by Shelly. My middle names come from Ghanaian culture. Araba means girl born on Tuesday. Names like this were the way they kept records of birth in Ghana for a while. The system was based on the day you were born and the event around the time you were born. Ahinawa means queen, which I was always reminded of growing up to never forget that my ancestors were royalty and that I should keep my head held high like I'm wearing a crown. My name is poetry. Both of my parents are from Ghana. I grew up in both worlds, traveling back and forth between the US and Ghana my entire life. In both worlds, I was treated like an outsider. Being unable to speak the native language, Chi, I was made fun of by my family. I still am now. When I was in the States, I was a tall black girl amongst people with long straight hair and light colored eyes. I, had always, I had always had feelings about how I was treated, but wasn't always able to talk to my parents about most things because being brought up in present day America and Ghana in general are two completely different worlds with little to no bridge connecting the two. For me, the bridge was poetry. A huge theme in black culture and one very prevalent in my own life is expression. Songs, dance, speeches, and one part that stood out to me the most growing up, poetry. I loved poems of all kinds and cultures so much that I started writing my own. I'd write poems about Akan folklore stories, about animals, about my feelings, and about whatever else I felt needed to be written. I need poetry. Most of my poetry is fueled by emotion, anger, sadness, joy, celebration. During the year 2020, I wrote a lot of poetry. You can only imagine how much emotion I was feeling as a seventh grade girl watching the news and only hearing about life getting worse and worse. I had a lot to say, so instead, I wrote. Because the words I wanted to speak were filled with hatred. I was very, very, very angry at myself, my family, the world, and especially my grades. So I would open my notes app late at night when my mind wouldn't quiet down and I'd write. I'd write my poetry. Today, I have three poems to share, all original. Two were written from the past two years referencing George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and the events of 2020. The last one was written recently because I was inspired by my experience as a black, black girl at Brooks. The first poem is called, He Can't Breathe. He can't breathe, officer, he can't breathe. He's not resisting, so why won't you see? You're hurting him, just an innocent life. There's no gun in his hand, nor a knife, yet you'll still take his life. How many more of us must die? How many more mothers and children must cry for you to realize we're not all bad? She was an officer, and he was a dad. Who do we call when we need saving, as the good and the bad are constantly rearranging? You're scared, but we're the ones dying. As our numbers grow, it's death-defying. The next poem is untitled, so please feel free to recommend an, an, a title for it. <laughs> untitled. Every day, I go on my phone and see another person of color killed. I sit and I cry, and I wonder how many more. I wonder if I'll ever be one of them. I wonder how our lives are seen as disposable, how we can't drive, walk with hoods on, just live without being seen as a threat. I hope one day I won't have to live in fear because I'm tired of fighting for my life instead of living it. I'm tired of having to educate those who don't want to hear it. I have a dream that one day my children will turn on the TV and not see people like them shown as loud and aggressive. They won't have to be the only black kids in their class. They'll be able to watch the news and not see kids in cages. They'll be able to trust those who run our country. They'll get to love whoever, believe whatever, and be whoever they want. When that day comes, I'll look back at years like 2020 and think of it as a mere nightmare. No, a wake-up call that we actually picked up. And I need us to, to take this call and run with it. Run and don't stop until we can finally get a taste of true freedom. Not this weak excuse of it. We've lost the true meaning of that word. I want to look back and see that I survived, that I helped change this messed up world. I did it. I survived. Not one pandemic, but two. I survived. The last poem is called Black Love, which is a common phrase used within the black community. When Googled, you'll find a TV show on the Oprah Winfrey Network. But in an article I read, black love is defined as. Black love is recognizing your own privilege based on your class, gender, or non-racial identities, and acknowledging the struggles of others. It's placing the most directly impacted of us at the forefront of the conversation, even if that means taking a step back and letting others speak. 
It's sacrifice, it's excellence, it's taking care of your beautiful skin full of melanin. And I hope this poem can set you to the definition. Black love. Black love is sitting on the floor while your friend oils your hair. It's going to BSU meetings, not only for the donuts, but to be with your people. It's cornrows and box braids, locks and curls. Too many hair pods keep count and bracelets representing your flag. It's knowing that some of the things you do aren't only for you, but to inspire the next generation. To pave a way into a new world. It's being a branch on the ever-growing tree of life. Black love is soul and swag and rhythm. It's having a song in your heart and a beat in your walk. It's nights in the black box listening to music that the majority might not understand or enjoy. That's what makes you truly feel something. Black love is love that looks deeper than the flesh while still acknowledging the power of the color of your skin. It's acceptance with a hint of rebellion. It's respecting and remembering those who helped you get to where you are today. Black love is beautiful. I love being black. I want to end my speech by thanking Doc Seals, Mr. Jones, and Mrs. Benolfo for helping me put my words together on paper in a way that actually makes sense. And, for to, you, and, and to you all, for giving me a space to express myself. Thank you, and I can't wait to see you all at the dance this Saturday. <laughs>